Hey, welcome back, YouTube. Thank you very much for all the views that we got on the last video. The five out video got like 10,000 views in two days. Today, we're going to be covering traps, the locations on the court to trap, when the best time to trap is, when to stop the trap. Okay, so take a look at the screen. How many defenders do you see? If you said zero, you're wrong. Right now, I see at least four defenders on the court. So this is where trapping becomes important. Let's get these players set up as if they're taking the ball out. So before the ball is even passed in, we want to set up our defense. This is very important to have our defense set up and so the defenders know where to trap. The best place to trap and the best time to trap is right when the ball is being passed in. You'll see the red square indicates a trap area. This is because the sideline and the baseline act as defenders. Before you even put a defensive player there, there's two defenders waiting, the baseline and the sideline. We put a person here to try to keep the ball from going in the middle. We'll have another person in this area ready to trap as well. So currently you have three and four applying trap to number two. So you have four playing defense, three playing defense, you have the baseline and the sideline all playing defense. Two has nowhere to go with the basketball once they receive the ball. So once four and three collapse on two, you're forcing a turnover. It's always good to have somebody near to wait for a turnover to happen. If they try to make a bad pass, you have a, a player there to get the pass. The next best place to have traps is right here in the midcourt area. The closer to the sideline, the better. So midcourt is gonna act as one defender by itself. So if you can get a player by the midcourt and a sideline and trap them here, or as they come across here, then you have defenders helping you out already. As you can see, you're gonna have number five and number one. Again, the numbers don't matter but you're gonna see them applying pressure to put two in a situation to where they have to make a bad pass. Otherwise, it's a turnover. Now this can happen on either side of the court once they're trying to bring the ball up. If they cross half court, then it's a back and forth and it's a turnover. If they step out of bounds, it's a turnover. If they make a bad pass, it's a turnover. So if you notice, I have put red spaces everywhere that you would like to trap where you have help by two invisible defenders, the sideline and baseline, the sideline and midcourt. Those are invisible defenders. Using these invisible defenders will help you to get turnovers. They apply added pressure to force turnover. Now, there are some additional places that you should apply traps in order to force a turnover or to deny the other team to score. So I have indicated in purple where you should set traps to prevent teams from getting into the paint or from scoring. If you notice, no matter what type of defense that you're playing, you should always be able to trap these areas. Now to trap in the paint or to deny entry into the paint is gonna take two solid defenders that know how to set traps. They have to be foot to foot and their arms out. Now that I have showed you the basics of setting a trap and where to set the trap, now it's time for me to tell you when to pressure the ball and set traps and when not to. You should always try to trap the ball to force turnovers. This makes the other team tired. It puts pressure to force turnovers and high pressure situations. You need to lay off of a full court traps, which are the traps in this area down here if the team has a good press break, meaning they have teams that can get the ball passed, get down and score quickly, while your team is trying to recover from setting the trap. So now that I've told you when you can set traps and when you can't set traps, I will show you the best position the player should be in to set these traps and also be able to recover to play defense and transition. Number two is gonna pass the ball into number one. Immediately, you want number four and number two to apply that pressure. Looking at the court, you will see that two will be passing the ball into one. Well, our players are set up ready to defend. Number four 
is denying the lane. So he's intimidating two. He doesn't want two to pass the ball in to the middle in case number three, four, or five are down here. All right, so they're denying the middle of the court, basically. Number two is denying on the sideline and ready to put pressure. So as soon as the ball is passed in, two passes to one, and immediately there's pressure being put on by number four. And there's pressure being put on by number two. So number two and number four are physically adding pressure. The baseline and the sideline are two invisible defenders that are also adding pressure. If number one, if we do in a half court trap, number one gets all the way down, you're gonna try to force them over to the left hand side of the court or the right hand side of the court. Anywhere when you see these red areas. You can trap in the middle, but then you don't have the sideline to help you. Only thing you have is the mid court line. So one crosses the line, he's pressured into the corner by three applying pressure and two applying pressure. And now you have two physical defenders and two imaginary defenders, the mid court line and the sideline. Now, if one happens to pass the ball and get it to three, you have number one here to apply pressure toward the sideline and number four to apply pressure. Then two has to recover and four has to recover. Two has to recover and then three has to recover. When one passes the ball to three, four and one have now came to play defense. Three recovered, two recovered, and five is ready to play defense. So you still have pressure keeping the player toward the sideline. Anytime a player gets near the sideline and the baseline, the sideline and the midcourt, you should apply pressure. You have at least one imaginary defender helping you. You might even have two if you can get them on the baseline and the sideline or midcourt and the sideline. Now the key is when forcing a trap in any of these locations that I have mentioned, your teammates, your fellow defenders have to be ready for this bad pass that the other team is going to make so you can get an easy turnover transition to the basket. Thank you guys for the support. I think we received 148 subscribers and over 10,000 views in two days from the five out video. That was the basic video and I will be making another video for intermediate and advanced. Hey, thank you for watching. Please share this with your friends, share this with your coaches, teammates, help the whole basketball community out. Don't just keep this information for yourself. If you have learned something, please like, subscribe, comment, share,